Do you find yourself building the same actions over and over again in Zapier? Are you duplicating the same zap multiple times to build the same automation for different people on your team? It's no surprise, really. One of the main purposes of workflow automation is to eliminate those tedious tasks that we have to do every day. But you don't want to replace one type of monotonous work with another. You don't want to replace filling out paperwork every day for building automations every day to fill out paperwork. Instead, you could use subzaps to build a single set of automated actions that you can call on from as many zaps as you'd like. With subzaps, you can build a single modular automation and reference it from any other zap with just a couple clicks. Hi, I'm Tom from X-Ray Tech, the workflow company. At X-Ray, we use automation providers like Zapier alongside other no-code and AI tools to help people save time and give people confidence in their everyday workflows. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use subzaps to create modular reusable automations. So you can save time with automation while you're saving time with automation. Let's get started. Subzaps let you repeat commonly used sets of automated actions without needing to build all of the same steps in several different zaps. For instance, you could create a subzap that contains steps for creating new tasks and alerting the task assignee. This would allow you to establish multiple avenues for creating tasks, like using a simple form or sending a message in a dedicated Slack channel. Alternatively, you could use a subzap for adding new leads and clients to your CRM. Whether the leads come from your website, a third-party channel, an email, or just an in-person meeting, you can make sure they're all added to your CRM in exactly the same way. Subzaps are particularly useful when it comes time to update your frequently used actions. Instead of updating them in 20 different zaps, you can just update them in a single subzap. For instance, if you switch your CRM from Copper to HubSpot, you can just swap out these steps in your subzap instead of replacing them in every zap that funnels leads into your CRM. Currently, subzaps are still in beta. As you use them, you'll find the user experience isn't as polished as many of Zapier's other features. However, they're still functional and definitely worth trying out if you've built several zaps that perform largely the same actions, especially if you have the same zap duplicated for multiple people on your team. Ultimately, using subzaps when appropriate will help you build more efficient and easily maintainable automations. So let's take a look at setting up a subzap. First, I'll give you a quick overview of how subzaps work. Then, I'll show you how to build an example subzap step by step. Subzaps are built as separate zaps that you can call on from other zaps. A subzap will always start with a trigger, start a subzap, and will always end with a return from subzap step. This means that subzaps will never run unless called on by another zap. Just for clarity, I'll refer to any zap that calls on a subzap as a parent zap. There's nothing different or special about these zaps, and it's not a term that you'll see in Zapier. It's just a term I'm using for any zap that calls on a subzap. So a parent zap includes a call to a subzap, and a subzap is called by a parent zap. Got it? Good. Let's get zapping. In the subzap trigger, you can include a list of inputs to collect data from the parent zap. Then, in the return from subzap step, you can include a list of outputs to send back to the parent zap. So, if you're using a subzap to create tasks, you may want to include inputs for the task's name, due date, and assignee. Then, when the subzap finishes, you'll probably want to send back something like the task's URL in your task management app. To call a subzap, you just need to have a subzap action in your parent zap and choose the call a subzap event. Then just pick the subzap you want to use and include any required inputs that you previously configured. You can then add any additional actions you want the parent zap to perform, then turn it on. Note that both your parent zap and the subzap will need to be published and turned on in order for the automation to work correctly. Published and turned on. Be sure to double check that. Now, let's take a look at building subzaps and incorporating them into other parent zaps step by step. For our example, we'll build a subzap that creates tasks in our Notion tasks database. Then, 
We'll call on our subs app from one parent zap that watches for Airtable records. And we'll call on it again from another parent zap that watches for Slack messages in a dedicated tasks channel. First, we'll create a new zap. We'll immediately give it a descriptive name. This is very important here because we need to be able to find this sub zap easily later. For the trigger, search for sub zap. Choose start a sub zap as the event. This will indicate that Zapier should consider this zap a sub zap, which is required for it to be selectable in our parent zap. Then, fill in any inputs or arguments you want the sub zap to collect from the parent zap. The sub zap won't automatically have access to any of the data gathered in the parent zap's trigger and actions. Any data that you want to use from your parent zap needs to be included in these inputs. In our example, there are a few fields we'll need in order to create a complete task, like task title, due date, and project. When you create your inputs, you're just providing labels. You don't need to provide any values for these inputs yet. So we'll create a separate input for the task title, due date, and each of the other fields we want to collect data for, but we won't provide a title or date or any other value. We'll also add a Slack ID field so that Zapier knows who to send the notification to once the task is created, and a Notion ID field so that we can identify this user in Notion as well. Now we'll test the trigger. This is where we'll run into the main downside of subzaps. Testing is a bit clunky to say the least. When you run your test, the trigger will almost certainly succeed, but every one of your inputs will simply say missing sample data. This is actually fine. Since the subzap is a fully separate zap, it can't gather any dynamic data from your parent zap unless you've already sent a call to this sub zap from your parent zap. Since we want to use real data while building and testing our sub zap, let's go ahead and create that parent zap in a new tab. This zap will let us create tasks in Notion by filling out a short form in Airtable, so we'll use a new record trigger in Airtable. Then we'll add a new action and search for subzap. We'll choose call a subzap as the event and select the subzap we created earlier. We'll fill out all of these inputs with data from the Airtable record. Now we'll test this step. We get an error because we haven't added a return step in our subzap yet, but this is fine. We'll fix that later. Our subzap received the call from the parent zap anyway, so we'll have the test data we need to build the rest of the subzap. Let's switch back to the subzap and test the trigger again. Now we can see the call we just made from the parent zap and it includes all of the data we entered into the inputs. You can now add the actions you want to include into your subzap. Adding actions in a subzap will be exactly the same as adding actions to any other zap. Just make sure to only include the actions that you want to repeat every time you call on this subzap. We'll add a notion step to create a new database item for our tasks database. We'll fill in the fields with the data sent by the parent zap. Now that this step is all configured, we can give it a test. and a task is successfully created. We'll add one more action to this subzap before closing it out. We want to send a Slack message to the task's assignee, so we'll add a Slack action and choose direct message as the event.
will fill out the message and include the Notion URL where the assignee can see their new task. We'll test this step and we've got a Slack message complete with a Notion URL. Now we just need to add a return action so that Zapier knows this subzap is complete. We'll add an action, search for subzap and choose return from a subzap as the event. In the output return values field, you can include any data that you'd like to send from your subzap to any parent zap that calls on it. We'll include the Notion task URL in our example. We'll test this last step. And now we'll publish the subzap. Now we'll go back to our parent zap and test the call a subzap action again. This time, the test should succeed. However, when you test the subzap from the parent zap, the subzap won't actually run any of its actions. Like I said before, testing your work with subzaps is clunky at best. To make sure the whole setup works, we'll make sure both the parent zap and the subzap are published and on, and we'll run a live test. We'll fill out the Airtable form to trigger the parent zap which should in turn call on the sub zap, which will create a new Notion task and send a Slack message. We wait a few minutes, and there it goes. We have a Slack message taking us to the newly created Notion task. Finally, let's create a second zap that will call on the same sub zap. This will let us create tasks in the same Notion database by sending a message in a dedicated Slack channel instead. We'll add a trigger to watch for new messages in a Slack channel. Then we'll add an Airtable search step so we can find the Notion ID of the person who sent the Slack message. Finally, we'll add a call a subzap step. And we'll pick the Notion task creator subzap that we built earlier. Once again, when we test this final step, nothing will happen we'll turn the zap on and give it a live test to confirm that it actually worked. I'll send a message in the tutorials channel. And once the zap runs, we get the same Slack alert as before, taking us to a new Notion task. As you can see, we can use this sub zap in as many parent zaps as we want. Subzaps are a useful tool for building more efficient, easily maintainable zaps. Since it's still in beta, there's still a lot of room for improvement, but it's well worth the effort if you're building for a team and find yourself consistently duplicating your automations for each team member. Give it a shot today and let us know what you think in the comments down below. If you've enjoyed this video, like and subscribe for more automation tips every single week. If you'd like to learn more about no-code and low-code automation, follow us on LinkedIn, Twitter, or Facebook, and you can find all of our content on our website at xray.tech. You can check all those links in the resources board down below, and as always, don't forget, keep the flow.